What unsolved mystery gives you the creeps? Part 6. If you like the kind of content we create, please subscribe, like, and share our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. The disappearance of Hale Boggs, majority leader in the U.S. House of Representatives from New Orleans, member of the Warren Commission, and Nick Begich, member of U.S. House from Alaska, disappeared without a trace in 1972 while flying in a light aircraft over Alaska. No wreckage was ever found. They were declared dead in 1973. Forty-plus years later, there is still no trace of their aircraft. Scut. Account 2. Just watch a documentary on the disappearance of Maura Murray, nursing student who emailed her professors there was a death in the family. There wasn't. Drove a couple hundred miles to a rural area in New Hampshire where her car spun out. A passerby talked to her and called the police. By the time the police arrived, she was gone. No footprints or anything. Oh, and there was a rag stuck in her tailpipe. The whole thing makes no sense. Account 3. The murder of Missy Bevers. It was implied that the father-in-law was the likely culprit, but he has been ruled out by police. The creepiest aspect of it is obviously the video of the killer, dressed up in SWAT gear, waiting for Missy to arrive at the church. The way the person just casually walks through the hallway and their weird walk is haunting. Also, the murder plan itself is really strange. The killer most likely knows they are being recorded, hence the full costume. They also must know how tight of a window they have to commit the murder and get away then. If Missy were 15 minutes late that morning, or one of the people coming to the class showed up 15 minutes early, or if the murder took a little longer than planned, there would have been witnesses. It just seems like so many unnecessary risks for a planned murder. Did they want the murder to be recorded? So they took these risks in order to kill her in front of security cameras? Police say the actual killing wasn't caught on camera. That may be a lie to conceal facts of the crime, though, to aid investigation. They wouldn't release that footage anyway, so it couldn't help them in any other way. Account 4. M25 Cat Killer. Or the Croydon Cat Killer. There is someone in my city who has been murdering pet cats for at least two years now. My kitty is not allowed outside at night because of this, nor allowed out the front, mid-terrace, at all. The police are actively searching for the person, and now potentially persons, as quite often people who murder cats get bored and move on to people, specifically women. Account 5. A little girl named April Tinsley was kidnapped and murdered in my hometown in the late 80s. The murderer left several creepy handwritten notes, explicit photos, and used condoms in little girl's bicycle baskets years later and scrawled taunts on the side of a barn. It's super creepy and never got much media attention. Account 6. Late to the party, but here goes. The Dogmen of the American Midwest. There are hundreds of reported sightings of a creature that walks on two legs and has a very nearly human face. It moves very fast and can run on either two legs or four. It also makes a sound that sounds like a scream. The stories people tell of it are disturbing and go straight to my core. Account 7. Personal story. I live in SoCal and went to smoke weed in the hilltops where we can see the city lights. Out of nowhere me, my GF, and two friends see the whole sky turn neon green and disappear. This whole process takes about like three to five seconds. No sounds, no planes, nothing to explain the source of the green light. I've smoked at this hilltop before and it takes about ten minutes to walk on this public trail that's pretty far from any residence. A couple minutes after the green light disappeared, cops show up, which I have never seen before on that trail in my life. I smoked there quite a bit. They kicked us out for trespassing and said they got a noise complaint. I had weed on me, so I didn't question the police, dipped from that area, and still question what I saw that night, about five, six years ago. Account 8. One of my favorites is the Villisca Axe Murders. Small town, Villisca, Iowa, on June 10th, 1912. Eight people, six kids, two adults, found murdered while they were sleeping. Nobody knows who did it, still unsolved 105 years later. Making it even a little creepier, the house they were killed in still stands. Tours are offered and it's supposedly haunted. Former residents described hearing children's laughter and footsteps while they were in the house alone. Account 9. 
Another intriguing one is the Salish Sea human feet. Since 2007 to most recently in February 2016, about 16 feet have been discovered washed up on beaches in British Columbia and Washington. Though there is no 100% true explanation, it's believed most likely that the feet belong to people who have committed suicide by jumping off bridges. Their angles have detached and broke off and floated up to the beaches. If that's the true explanation, that's still pretty chilling. I wouldn't want to walk along a beach and find a human foot. Account 10. Lost. The Child Murders. At Robin Hood Hills. The deaths of the three kids in West Memphis, Arkansas in 1993. There is a great documentary series made about called Paradise Lost. It is a sad and infuriating story. Edit. The Robin Hood Hills Murders. Three teenagers dubbed the Memphis. Three were convicted, then later proved innocent and released. Several books were written about it. It was made into a movie starring Reese Witherspoon and Colin Firth. There have been several documentaries that followed the case through the years. The case started off as a tragic and sensational murder mystery and ended up being an embarrassment to the American justice system, but the identity of the killer still remains a mystery. Account 11. In 1994, it rained blobs of white cells over a small Washington town. Those who were exposed to the blobs got sick shortly after the episode. I don't think they ever solved what the blobs were, though some theories range from waste from an airplane, except FAA regulations require waste to be dyed blue and it's a violation to dump mid-flight, to an Air Force experiment that blew up a bunch of jellyfish outside of the town, though the Air Force denied this. The reason why waste was first thought is because the blobs had two kinds of bacteria, and one of the bacteria is common in the human digestive system. But it also had the eukaryotic cell, which meant it was alive at one point. Some in the town think it was a government experiment, maybe for biological warfare. I don't know. I wouldn't say it keeps me up at night, but kind of a fascinating story. I'm inclined to believe the jellyfish theory. Account 12. Ghost lights. The Marfa lights in particular. They have set up a viewing area to watch them at night, which means people obviously recognize them and acknowledge their existence. But after all these years, people still don't know what they are. They have theories, some highly plausible and probable, but they don't know for sure. Account 13. The Mary Celeste was found adrift and abandoned near the Azores in December 1872. Conditions aboard the ship suggest that whatever happened happened suddenly as if the crew were interrupted in the middle of routine tasks. No signs of struggle and no signs of a crime. The ten souls on board vanished, never to be heard from again. Account 14. The murder of Chaim Weiss. He was a high school boy at an Orthodox Jewish yeshiva religious school who was murdered in his dormitory. As of now, I don't believe there are any suspects. While this is a case which is pretty well known in the true crime world, and mystifies a lot of people, it especially creeps me out because I belong to the same religious society to which Chaim did and know many people who went to that same school. My own brother goes to a similar one. I simply cannot imagine anyone in our world killing a boy in a yeshiva dorm. Obviously nobody expects a murder, but it always frightened the crap out of me. Account 15 my own personal mystery doesn't really give me the creeps, but instead feels like a dream. In middle school, probably around 2005 to 2006, I remember very clearly reading a book with an orange cover and it had a hippie vibe to it. It was a fiction book about a man's niece and her friends trying to solve the mystery of who strapped bombs onto three National Guard jeeps on a college campus during a Vietnam protest. The uncle was present during the resulting explosions and lost his leg to shrapnel and people died. The first chapter is the uncle's POV at the campus just before and during the explosions. After that, it jumps to the present, and he is picking up his niece from her high school and challenges one of her classmates to a game of basketball. After the game, he takes his prosthetic leg off and comments about how it chafes sometimes and the kid he just beat shows shock about being beat by a man with one leg. I also remember later in the book, the niece's leg is broken when she get run off the road by the villain, and her leg is crushed by the engine block. Like I said, I vividly remember the book, but not the title of it, and I can't find it anywhere. Edit. I just remembered she didn't get run off the road. 
Her brake line was cut. 